What is up, guys, and welcome to Arch Linux. So this is what it's going to look like when you immediately get into the operating system after you're done installing it. And what we're going to jump right into is how you're going to be installing something. I already have an updated guide on how to use ArchFi to install Arch Linux so that it's easy and usable for any type of beginner. That way you'll have no issues. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is, of course, going over GNOME. Now, I would recommend just watching my going over Fedora to figure out GNOME, but I got to kind of separate the guides. I can't have you going back and forth. That would be a little bit weird. So this is your normal desktop. Changing backgrounds and display information as simple as right-clicking on the desktop, same as Windows, and then you can go and choose your background. Oof, that one's a little bit bright. Let's go with a more snowy background. Now, we're going to learn the settings in a second. Right click display settings allows you to change your resolution and also go over your displays to see what you want. Your primary display, of course, is the one where your panel is going to be and your dock is going to be or your dock to uh, panel. OK, this is also where you're going to adjust your refresh rate and look 25 hertz. We can make it cinematic. Yep, like 60 FPS videos more. So let's go over settings now. Your network is going to be in here, but you need Network Manager installed to be able to get this done. If you have a Bluetooth device, of course, your Bluetooth is going to be here. You got your background, your notifications. This is where your search is going to be. For now, we're going to turn on Do Not Disturb because I don't want anything to bug me. Your privacy settings and search. So this is your search right now, but you got your applications. You could set things to default if you need to. Uh, just like I will set Chrome as my default browser if I must. In here somewhere, uh, you have your mouse and trackpad, I believe. Unless I just jumped ahead. I jumped ahead, I apologize. Camera, microphone, Thunderbolt, file, screen lock, everything like that. When you default install Arch Linux with GNOME, you're going to notice that your microphone might be low, so don't forget to crank these both. Um, I just went over privacy for you. That's good. Online accounts allows you to connect your Google, your Facebook, your Microsoft, Flickr, you name it, it's here. And there's even a little bit of more here for you to check out. Sharing. So this is your computer name. You can turn on what you want to share if Samba is installed or if you click this button. Uh, it will allow you to turn on all of this. Right now, I don't like sharing things with people, so no. This is going to be where your sound is handled, your power. And I already went over display, trackpad, keyboard shortcuts are all here. Learn them well. You can add some to, I guess, if you need to. Change them as well. Uh, printer settings. So we go and we unlock this. You'd have to activate the printer settings. I didn't even bother because I don't really have a printer. This is where you deal with removable media, your color, regional and language settings, uh, accessibility, so high contrast, typing, screen keyboard, things like that. This is how you deal with your users. So if you want to change your password or turn on automatic login, my personal favorite, turn on automatic login. Uh, default applications, we already set Chromium. We don't have a mail application. I've set that as my text editor, my video editor, music editor. I'm going to set as something else later and my photos to image viewer. Date and time is as simple as it can be. I'm going to switch that to AM. Your time and your date are up here. And yeah, make sure you also turn on your location services in case you decide you want your weather. So we go in here, it'll automatically find us, but it won't be in there. So we can go here, location services, we can go and turn those on. And now our weather will be permanently imprinted right here on our little notification center. All right, so let's teach you how to install applications because I also want to do that. If you installed things the way that I did using ArchFi, you're going to have a program called Add and Remove. This is basically your all-in-one uh, application for installing anything. So if you don't ever want to use the terminal, you don't have to use the terminal. And we even have access to the AUR. Now here's the thing. There's one thing that I have a problem with more than any. And uh, that is this version of Pamac. So we're going to search yay. And I've already installed it. It's right here. You're going to want to install this too. If you watch the install guide, you'll already have it. Now I'm going to go to terminal and I'm going to do yay Pamac. The reason being is most of you are not going to end up using 
this at all, right? And it kind of sucks because this is a really, really good application to use, and so is the AUR. We're going to hit enter for everything. You're going to hit no. Uh, you're going to hit yes because you don't want a ton of files and stuff installed. And you're going to hit enter again, enter your password. Using yay is very easy. And you could have done the same thing in here. So if we went here, AMAC, you'll see that we have this one installed, but the one that we just installed is this one. I'm showing you the multiple different ways that you can go and install things. Now, the reason why we're installing this one is because it adds Snapped and Flatpak, uh, the ability to use both directly here in the preferences. You'll see two new things will pop up. Now, I understand that that might be a little weird for most people to do right out of the box, but you got to understand why I'm showing you how to do this. Snapped and Flatpak have pre-built uh, pre applications that you can go and install, such as Discord, RuneScape, and a whole bunch of others that sometimes won't install through the AUR. They'll always be up to date and very useful, so it's, recommenda it's my recommendation that you go and do that. If you saw the Fedora uh, learning guide, you'll also know that I recommended Flathub as well. I'm not a really good fan of Snapped, but if you like Snapped applications, at least you're going to have the ability to enjoy it. So right now, it's just automating everything for you. Most people think that Linux is all terminal. That's a stigma that I like getting people away from. You don't have to use the terminal, but it's good to learn the terminal. The reason being is if something goes wrong, you're going to know your way around the terminal commands, and you're going to be able to hopefully fix what's wrong. So if we go back to add and remove, you're going to notice that it doesn't look any different. But when we go to preferences, which you have to enter your password for, we can turn on black pack support and snap support. How cool is that? Now, you can also enable downgrade if you want in this one. And you can also select remove on required dependencies. So it will save you a lot of time and everything else. So you can see Discord just popped up, flat pack, you have other cool stuff. Minecraft just popped up. Going to install that because why not? And this is where we're going to be doing things for now on, okay? Do not install the flat hub version of Steam. Avoid it at all costs. There are certain ways around things, but you don't want to be doing it, okay? I know that might sound a little weird, but it just causes more problems than it should because it does come with older dependencies and stuff like that. and. Honestly, most of the time, newer dependencies work better anyway. And that's how you install things. You just, you just use this. You don't even have to use this. But I will have to teach you the terminal commands. So uh, let's finish what we're doing. So opening up terminal is easy. And if you don't want to keep opening it up through search, you don't have to. You can go and you can add it to favorites. You can add that to favorites. And anything that you want to keep on your desk, you can add to favorites. Only things I've installed so far are Discord and OBS and my NVIDIA drivers. Okay, so welcome to the terminal. Strap your butts in. This is going to be a learning experience, hopefully. And you don't have to be scared of the terminal. As I said, it's a very friendly little guy. So first off, you need sudo to be able to execute this next command, okay? Ackman is our package manager. Dash capital S is the way that we're going to install things, okay? And after you do that, you can type whatever you want. Um, CMake, make, I need all these things, believe it or not. Uh, what else can we grab, I guess? Well, I usually use these as an example anyway, but I guess I can also show you how to install the NVIDIA drivers. So NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA utils. NVIDIA settings, lib32 dash NVIDIA utils, like that. And when you hit enter, all of this is going to pop up, okay? So as you can see, I have all of this installed. I want to hit no, and we're going to wipe out all this NVIDIA stuff. So if you have NVIDIA, that's how you install the drivers. But right now, I just want to go and install all of this. If you're on AMD and you're looking to use Vulkan so you can use Proton and everything else, what you're going to do is you're going to type in, I believe it's Vulkan 
Radeon. And hit enter. That's it. It's installed. And as I said, you can do all of this in add and remove and never once touch this, this at all. But I like showing you things, okay? If you want to remove it, it's actually very simple. You type capital R, C, and then every other package with it and relate it will be removed. Okay? Another thing that you could do with this is if you ever want to update your system using the terminal, all you have to do is hit S, Y, U. And that's a capital S, as always. Remember to correct yourself. And doing so will find you the newest packages like this uh, libjpeg turbo. All right? That's done. If you ever want to refresh your repositories, okay, or your mirror list, you erase the U and you just go SY. That will update everything. Another thing you're going to want to install or enable, in other words, is what's called the multi-lib repository. It's very important for some NVIDIA stuff. So you're going to type this, sudo gedit slash etsy slash pacman.conf. This is very important. You go all the way down and you'll see multi-lib. It's going to look like this one, okay? All you have to do is remove these little guys right here, the little numpad signals, or as you guys consider them these days, hashtags. And once you do that, you hit save. So close without saving. Uh, you need to save it, and then you run this command again, and then it will activate the repositories. So there you go. You know GNOME, and now you know everything you need to install applications. This is part one. Part two will cover pretty much going over GNOME and customizing it the way that you want to, because right now, it's not very friendly, and I want to give you a better overall user experience. Thank you for watching this video. Um, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of future content, and I'll see you in part two.